Welcome to another episode of Side Talk. Today, this is a special Side Talk. I've decided to go back to my reality TV wrap-ups, and I'm going to be doing these, and I'm going to post them to YouTube, and we're going to chop it up about these reality TV shows because I am all in. I've always been all in, but I stopped doing these wrap-ups because I was focusing more on passion, purpose, and struggle, and, you know, my other podcasts, <laughs> the All Hell No podcast, and then I was also bringing you guys different things on side talk, just life stuff, but I think this is a good place for reality TV as well, right, because it's side talk. This is our stuff that we talk about on the side, so um, I hope that you guys are ready for my reality wrap-up, because I got a lot to say, and today we're going to be doing Basketball Wives. So basketball wise, this show is weird because it comes on, then it's gone for a while, then it comes back and it kind of did a reboot. I feel like it was like a reboot, right? And it came back and it's with Jackie Christie, Brooke Bailey was on it. Um, who else? A lot of um, Jennifer Williams, Malaysia, uh, what's her name? The Brinks girl. I can't remember her name. But anyway, um, if you watch the show, then you know, right? If you know, you know. The show this season, I watched it. It's crazy that British got charged with some fraud or whatever, and she had to wear an ankle bracelet the entire season. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this fraud stuff. It's crazy. I don't even know how people get caught up in that because I would be so scared to do anything like that. Like, seriously, it's insane to me. But um, you know what? It's none of my damn business. So I don't know. But this season, she was on. I don't know what's going to happen with her case. I just read that she pled guilty to 15 counts of fraud, I think it was. I hope that, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say that I hope because Dealing with the feds is not a game. Like they don't play. When they come for you, they come for you. You're gonna be doing some time. Like, look at look at Todd Chrisley. Look at the other lady from Salt Lake City. Listen, it's not a joke. So I wish her well. I really do. I enjoyed watching her this season, and I hope that things work out for her. And I hope that she learned a valuable lesson from this experience, and that she can take it with her, you know, and and just be better. So that's what I have to say about that. This season, Brandy and Duffy were going back and forth. I never knew that Brandy and Duffy were friends, like like friends, friends. And I don't know what was really going on with them, but they started arguing. And I think Malaysia was kind of like the, the source of contention between them because Malaysia and Brandy used to be really close. Some things happened. They are not close anymore. Um, Brandy was mad because she felt like Malaysia didn't reach out to her when her father died, considering how close of a friend she was to her. She knew how important her dad was to her. Malaysia was like, I didn't know your dad died. Brandy's like, you a liar. You knew like, I, I don't know. I'm confused. But anyway, um, their relationship is just not ever going to be what it used to be. And Duffy is still is cool with Malaysia. So I think it brought a little bit of contention to her relationship with Brandy because, you know, when you're friends with somebody, you never really want your friends to be too close with people that you have fallen out with. That's just how it is. That's how women are. Right. But as grown women, we have to understand that when you're when you have a friend circle. Right. There are going to be times where you might fall out. Um, of friendship with somebody in that friend circle and you have to decide if the friends that remain in that friend circle are worth having a relationship with and how you want to proceed with that relationship considering that you are not friends with one of the people that exist within that circle right and you can't really be mad at other people for not 
wanting to pull away from that person because you have pulled away from that person. And I have experienced this where I have fallen out of friendship with somebody in a friend circle and everybody else is still cool with that person. And I'm not mad at any of those people for being cool with that person. I just, you know, I just didn't like the way that I was being treated. And I feel that if I am friends with someone, I expect to be treated a certain way with consistency. And if you can't be a consistent friend with me, then I don't want to be friends with you, period. So everybody's um, level of friendship and what they their expectations are from a friendship is different. So maybe some people are okay with inconsistencies and mediocrity and things like that. It doesn't work for me. I don't do it. I don't deal with it well and I don't do it. So if I see that from a person, I'm done. And if I have mentioned it to you more than one time and you, you're not addressing it, telling me why the inconsistencies exist or what is the problem, then for me, you just a fake ass bitch and I'm done, right? So that's me. I don't know. Everybody's different. You got to do what works for you. So I think Duffy felt like I'm not going to stop being friends with Malaysia because you're not friends with Malaysia. Even though Brandy was saying, I don't, I don't care if you're friends with Malaysia, but Brandy's actions were saying something different. Her mouth was saying, I don't care that you're friends with Malaysia, but her energy was saying something totally different. So it seems that they have made up on the reunion and they're going to continue to work on their friendship. And I hope that that's what they do because good friends are hard to find. And if they've been friends for many, many years and have supported each other, I hate to see when good friendships fall apart because of something so petty and stupid because we're in our feelings about stupid things, right? So don't lose good friendships over pettiness. Have a conversation, work it out. There's a difference between pettiness and, um, you know, fake ass bitches. Like there, there's a difference and you should be able to spot the difference. So just know that, okay? So Malaysia ended up leaving the show because at dinner, her and Jennifer kind of got into it. And Jennifer put her business in the street saying that she had to file foreclosure or her house went into foreclosure or something like that. I don't know. And that upset Malaysia and she left the show. Now, to me, I agree with the girls. The girls said that was crazy. She should never have left the show because if you are struggling financially, the show is paying you. Why would you leave your paycheck because things got a little too real in a heated conversation. You're on a reality show. Use what's going on in your life to tell your story. And mind you, this keeps you from using other people's lives for a storyline, okay? So to me, they're right. Girl, talk about your struggles. Talk about the, the foreclosure. What happened? What you gotta do? What you doing now? Like, tell us your sob story. We wanna know. We wanna support you. We wanna, you know... We want to hear what's going on. She didn't want to do that. So she left the show. Again, if you're going to be on a reality show, your life is going to be everybody's business. And everybody goes through things. You're not the only person that has foreclosed on a house. A lot of people have experienced that, you know? So talking about an experience like that and talking about what you learn from the experience and how you're moving forward from it can help other people. So it's nothing to be ashamed of, but people and pride, whoo, I don't know. Moving on. She left the show. For me, Jackie Christie, she got, she needs to go. I'm sorry. I don't think, think Christy, uh, I don't think Jackie Christie, Christie is an asset to the show. I think she's a little bipolar. I feel like she is fake. I feel like she is not genuine. I, I just said that because I said fake, right? I, I just feel like she goes from zero to 100 for no reason. The way that she attacked Jennifer 
on this season was crazy to me. And it was over nothing. Okay, you, you want to sell real estate now. And Jennifer made a comment to you off camera about a listing that you showed her. Nobody heard Jennifer make this comment. She brought it to the to the table saying that she was carrying feelings for Jennifer because Jennifer said something about a listing that she showed her. Girl, that could have been a private conversation with you and Jennifer. If y'all are really friends, you could have said, Jennifer, I hurt my feelings when you made fun of my listing. I'm sure she would have apologized and y'all could have moved forward. But no, she was carrying feelings for her about it. And then everything that Jennifer was doing, she tried to sabotage in some way, shape, or form, whether it was acting a damn fool at the event, talking reckless, or bringing up her accomplishments to try to diminish what Jennifer had going on. It was just a disgusting display. Like, if you are a girl's girl and you are claiming that you are supportive, you are a good friend, you are for the women, you are... Girl, everything that you did was opposite of that. It was opposite, including lying and telling everybody that you were a producer on Jennifer's um, project. She did absolutely say or allude to that. Just because somebody calls you and tell and shares with you what they're working on and says, hey, what do you think? That doesn't make you a contributor. It doesn't make you a producer. It doesn't make you a co-owner. It doesn't make you any of those things. It makes you a friend who is supporting your friend by telling them what you think prematurely because they're working on it. So they're asking for your opinion. That's what friends do. She's delusional. The way she spoke to Jennifer, how she cussed her out, how she got in her face, it was crazy. Now, I do have to say, they went to a trip that Jackie hosted in Sacramento, and um, Jennifer acted a damn fool at the hotel because she felt like her room wasn't up to par. I am so sick of watching these women go on trips and complain about the rooms that they're getting or the accommodations that they have for the duration of the trip. Like, these are mini trips. They're not like they're going on vacation for 10 days, right? Right. You're going to be there for a couple of days. You got a bed. You got working water. It's clean. Um, you got food. You got like, y'all are bugging. Okay. Stop acting like y'all are male multimillionaires or billionaires who have only stayed in the best of places. Like, it's just ridiculous to me. Okay. So for me, if I, if I checked into a hotel and it was beneath the standards that I am used to, I would simply go down to the front desk and say, hey, I have this room. Is there a possibility that I can upgrade my room? I'll pay for the difference and blah, 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 right? That is how you roll if you have the means to roll like that and you want to live a certain way and you know have certain things be in in a certain order yelling and screaming and asking if somebody thinks you're a basic bitch that was crazy um I, I don't know it just to me that wasn't giving um sophistication honey like no that was giving basic bitch right because only somebody ghetto and basic would act like that like, come on, if you are saying that you are this person, you have to be this person in all aspects of your life. And knowing how to navigate your way through certain situations requires you to fall on your higher self, right? So you get into a situation where you get a room and it's not up to par, girl, check yourself into another room. It's just like Kenya on Housewives of Atlanta. Kenya will book her own room. She'll be like, oh, I'm at the house down the street. I'm not staying with y'all. Or, oh, I flew in on, um, I flew private by myself with my baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I did. Yep. That, that's how you got to do it. So if that's what you're used to and that's what you can afford and that's what you want, there's no need to curse anybody out or get in anybody's face about what they um, put in place for you. You step it up on your own. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So Brooke, I love Brooke. I love her energy. I always liked her ever since she came on the first time and then she left. She's going through a divorce. 
on the show. So she's, you know, trying to decide whether she wants to stay with her husband or not or whatever, because he cheated. Um, and I thought it was nice that she shared that because I'm sure a lot of women go through situations like that where they really don't know what to do when they're caught in a place where they love their husband, but they're so you know, like devastated by the betrayal and don't know if they can ever get past it, right? So I felt like that was a great thing for her to share with the audience of the ups and downs of that situation. She did end up sharing on the reunion that they did end up splitting. And she also had a tragic situation in her life where her daughter, her young 20 something year old daughter passed away in a car accident, which was just terrible. The thing for me on the reunion was when she called out Jackie about being, not just being fake, you know, like here you are saying that you're a good friend and you're this and that. And my daughter passed away and you ain't, it was crickets, right? And Jackie, in true Jackie fashion, instead of saying, you know what, Brooke, I received that and you're right. I did go silent and it's because I'm not good at, at, you know, like when it comes to things like that, I don't know what to do. And it's something that I need to work on. And I apologize for not being there for you. That is what a real friend would say or something like that. It's to take ownership of who you are and what you struggle with and then apologize. No, she doubled down and was like, oh, da 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 Like, I could not believe that that was the position that she took on that. Let me tell y'all something. Everybody is not good at dealing with the curveballs of life. Some people ain't good when it comes to death. Some people ain't good when it comes to marriages, baby showers, um, I, I don't know, events, right? What you need to be good at is owning your stuff. If you know that you don't know how to act when these activities and these um, things come around in life, own that, okay? Own it. When somebody dies, nobody, nobody knows what to say, especially when you're burying, when you're somebody you know is burying a child. Like that's crazy, right? That's not how it's supposed to go. But this is life and we don't know what's gonna happen in our lives, right? So when that happens, you don't have to call. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Technology has advanced in so many ways. You can send a text message. You can send a voice note. You can send flowers. You can send a fruit basket. You can send chocolates. There are so many things that you can do just to say, I am so sorry that you're going through this. I don't know what to say, but I'm here for you. You could send food. Order from their favorite restaurant, just deliver the food to their house. Send groceries. There's so many things that you can do. Send them a gift card for a massage. Don't do nothing and then say, I didn't know what to say. You sound crazy. So that is my spiel on that. And that's really where I'm going to end this because that was it for me. So the season apparently is coming back and they're bringing back Evelyn, Evelyn Lozada. Now, every, like some people don't like Evelyn. I loved Evelyn. I just do. I love a real chick who just says what's on her mind and just keeps it 100, whether it's, whether people like what she has to say or not. Like, I just love people who are their authentic selves, like who just don't care and they're just who they are. I cannot, I cannot hate on people like that. You know what I'm saying? But some people really didn't like her. They thought she was just foul and she's just terrible and tacky and whatever. But I didn't, I don't get that from her. From her, I just read that she's just real and she's who she is and, and, you know, it is what it is, whatever. So I'm glad they bring in Evelyn back, but I really wish that they would get rid of Jackie because she does not bring anything to the show and she's just hella fake. And when she spazzes on people, it's just so 
fake and out of control and stupid and it makes no sense and the things that she says are crazy it's just it's tiring it's exhausting i bring somebody new in bring in a new elder if you if y'all want to have somebody older that's supposed to be i don't know the voice of reason or something like that bring somebody else in with her she she's terrible i i can't so oh and duffy said that she's not coming back either and well, I don't care. I, I didn't. I mean, it's nice that her and her fiance are finally going to get married after being engaged for so long. And, you know, at first I was like, why is she engaged for so long? This is a long time. But you know what? I respect what she said. She wanted to make sure that when she got married, that it was right. And she just felt like things were not in place. They were not right. So I respect that. So you never know what people's journeys are or what they're going through or what they're dealing with or what they're trying to work through. But I respect that she's taking the time so that when she does it, she knows that it, it was right and that, you know what I'm saying, it's going to last. So um, I, I hope that they do get married and that they do last because he seems like a really nice guy and like he loves her. So I just hope that they can work through their communication issues and, um, you know, live happily ever after with their family. So I'm going to stop right here, guys. This is my Basketball Wives wrap up for the season that took place this year. Drop some comments. Let me know what your thoughts were, how you felt about the season. If you want to see the season come back, who you don't want to see on next season. Yeah, I, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. So share them with me. Until next time, guys. <laughs>